Today what we're going to talk a little bit about is self-care and how to t deal with the anxiety, the frustration, the fear, the anger, the depression that many of you may be feeling as the pandemic continues. I want to start with talking about our kids. It's an extremely difficult time for the youth and parents in our county. As schools discussed opening or not opening, virtual or live, a lot of families were put again into a, a position of feeling anxious about, well, what am I going to do? Do I have to telecommute and take care of my kids? How do I help my kids? We want to reassure everybody there's a lot of help out there. But I have some tips and some guidances that I'd like to provide for parents and for the community how to help our youth who are missing out on quite a bit of their usual activities that they would have done in a regular school year. Each of you can help support your youth locally by validating their feelings, recognizing their grief, and reminding them that their sacrifices are recognized. While they're missing out on seeing friends and going to football games, these may not seem as important to adults, but remember, our kids don't have the life experiences adults have, and those are extremely important life goals for them, to see their friends, go to a football game, interact, be in a school play, and all of that's gone for them now. That's really important, and it's so important that uh, the adults in the community, parents, support our kids and give them alternatives. They may not be achieving those things, but there's a lot of other things they can achieve. Focus on reminding the young people in your life that this time will pass. I'm not sure when, but it will. This school year, um, please help arrange alternative school interactions to help continue to honor local students' personal and academic milestones in creative ways such as have a family Friday night pizza to celebrate the end of the school work. Schedule weekly family games or backyard sporting events to substitute for missed activities such as sports. And allow for regular virtual hangouts with friends. Activities such as these are vital to bring normalcy in a time of so much uncertainty. And for parents, many of you have to stay home. You're trying to work from home. You're trying to figure out how to do one more Google session or Zoom session for your kid's school. Many of you aren't prepared to, assist, prepared to assist with schoolwork, either the technology or the content. That's okay. You have still many things that you can help teach your kids. Budgeting, cooking, how to be quiet, how to schedule time. All of those are important life lessons that your kids can learn now when they aren't perhaps getting as much academic training as they would in a face-to-face -face school year. And those are all valuable. For you, check in with friendly phone calls, video chats, emails. Drop a greeting card or a message to a friend you know who may be struggling uh, by juggling their job and their kids and all of their different responsibilities. It's important that we support each other. I want to talk a little bit with how to deal with your fear over the rising case counts and how, some tips for keeping your anxiety at bay. We started with a, just a a breath. And even in this room, I felt people relax a little bit. Remembering to breathe, check yourself, it's so important. Just taking a moment can help you get a hold of your anxiety, your fear, help give you a chance to take a moment of relax. It's natural and it's okay to be fearful about the rising positive COVID-19 numbers in our county. We want to remind everyone that there's comfort in knowing you're not alone in your concerns. Our agency and many others, including your neighbors, community members, and spiritual leaders, are available and want to support you. Remember to take things day by day. Work to ground and center your feelings of uncertainty. It's important to focus on what you can control, not what you can't control. You can control and focus on your own physical distancing. You can control how much news and social media you engage in. If you notice that you're very anxious every time you watch the news for the fifth time, don't watch the news for the fifth time. You've already gotten the good information you needed to have. Give yourself a break. Expand your connections with loved ones, loved ones virtually. Go on more FaceTimes, Zoom calls, or just a regular telephone call. Hear some, a loved one's voice. That's very grounding and very supportive in many times. 
and then keep to a daily routine. Don't just stay in bed till 11 if you could. Get up, do your normal routine, walking, having a healthy breakfast, some of the other things that keep you centered. We also want to say that you can control your stress by getting outside daily. Some people feel they can't even go outside. Yes, you can. We encourage, and Dr. Borenstein encourages, people to get outside for some daily activity. It's safe to do so. We want you to breathe fresh air. We live in such a beautiful county. Take advantage of it. Exercise, whether indoor exercise or outdoors, walking your dog, uh, working in the garden, that helps relieve your stress and anxiety. Again, limit your social media use. People can spin up the more they read all the different rumors and all the different information. Give yourself a break. Schedule a social media break every day. You can create a calming daily or nightly routine by reading, meditating, sitting and doing some deep breathing, just sitting and watching outside a window to see what's going on outside without doing anything else. Give yourself the chance to do that. Take care of your mind through creative outlets, music, art, journaling, drawing. Give your, your mind a chance to relax from all the information and just create. That's even if I'm a horrible artist, but even if you just scribble, it's really relaxing to doodle. That's why so many of us did it in our margins when we were in school. It's a relaxing, diverting kind of thing. Give yourself a chance to be creative. Remember to eat nutritious meals. And finally, we want you to, you and your friends, family members, and neighbors to reach out for support if they're feeling stressed or afraid. We are so much stronger together, and we'll get through this together.